a pop concert, a blue light escort, and a private backstage audience, what do these have in common? They're all part of the deepening Taylorgate scandal that has gripped the UK's political sphere. Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer is now under intense scrutiny after revelations emerged that he and his family were not only granted VIP access to Taylor Swift's sold-out era's tour but also enjoyed a private chat with the superstar herself. As calls for transparency grow louder, the Prime Minister finds himself at the center of a storm over potential political influence, freebies, and the questionable use of police resources. The latest twist in the Taylor Gate saga has raised serious questions about the conduct of Sir Keir Starmer's government. What began as a controversy over Taylor Swift receiving a police escort to her London concert has now escalated into a political scandal that threatens to undermine the Prime Minister's promise of transparency and integrity. On August 20, Starmer and his family were treated to a private audience with Swift after receiving four free tickets to her Wembley concert, courtesy of Universal Music. This revelation has sparked outrage, with accusations of favoritism, misuse of police services, and a failure to disclose gifts, leading to calls for an independent inquiry into how much political influence was involved in this decision-making process. Sir Keir's alleged involvement in the Taylorgate row has raised eyebrows across the political spectrum. It was recently confirmed that the Prime Minister and his family were granted a private meeting with Taylor Swift backstage after the final night of her London concert on August 20th. This revelation, which Downing Street initially refused to confirm, has led to a series of uncomfortable questions for Sir Keir, especially given the backdrop of earlier reports that Scotland Yard was pressured into providing Swift with a high-profile police escort to bypass traffic on her way to the concert. The situation has now turned into a full-blown scandal, with critics accusing the government of using its influence to grant special treatment to a billionaire pop star. The controversy deepened when it was revealed that Starmer received £2,800 worth of tickets and hospitality from Universal Music, Swift's record label, adding fuel to the fire over the questionable ethics of accepting such lavish freebies. In addition, it has come to light that Sir Keir had previously accepted tickets worth £4,000 from the Football Association to attend one of Swift's concerts in June, prompting critics to question the transparency of his relationship with corporate donors and entertainment giants. Despite paying back £6,000 of gifts and hospitality after assuming office, including the August concert tickets, Starmer has yet to address why he accepted these gifts in the first place, and what, if any, political favors were exchanged for such hospitality. The allegations against the Prime Minister have not gone unchallenged. Downing Street has tamed that the talks between ministers and Scotland Yard over Swift's security were necessary due to security concerns following reports of a foiled terror plot in Austria, which had led to the cancellation of three of Swift's concerts earlier in August. According to a number 10 spokesperson, the government's dialogue with the police on this matter was appropriate and intended to ensure public safety at major events. However, this justification has done little to quell the public outcry, as many continue to question whether the VVIP escort was truly warranted or a result of political pressure. Adding to the intrigue is the role of Sue Gray, Starmer's now-dismissed chief of staff, who was reportedly involved in negotiations with Swift's mother, Andrea, which ultimately led to the arrangement of the police escort. With each new detail, the optics of the situation continue to worsen for Starmer, painting a picture of a leader who, instead of championing a clean government, appears to be engaging in behind-the-scenes deals that benefit the elite at the expense of taxpayers. Criticism has poured in from all sides. Susan Hall, the chairman of the Police and Crime Committee on the London Assembly, has been vocal in her demand for an independent inquiry into the matter, stating, the public deserves answers. How much political influence did the government place on our police? Meanwhile, Tory MP Louis French has added to the chorus of disapproval, calling on Starmer to be more transparent about the backstage privileges and VIP tickets, especially after what he described as the government's decision to tear up protocols to accommodate a celebrity. For many, the notion that a sitting prime minister could be engaging in such behavior while the country faces more pressing issues is nothing short of a betrayal. The scandal has even led to backlash within Starmer's own party. Shadow Paymaster General John Glenn has urged the Prime Minister to be more transparent with the public about the freebies he has accepted, pointing out the contradiction between his actions and his earlier promises of clean governance. 
Glenn's words resonate with a growing sentiment that the public is being kept in the dark about how and why decisions were made to grant such preferential treatment. As Taylorgate continues to unfold, one thing is clear the controversy is far from over. What started as a seemingly harmless VIP concert visit has spiraled into a scandal that could have far-reaching consequences for Sir Keir Starmer and his government. With mounting calls for an independent inquiry and increasing public scrutiny, the Prime Minister's handling of this situation may very well define his legacy. If there's one lesson to be learned, it's that political transparency is not just a buzzword, it's a necessity. And in the case of Taylorgate, it appears Sir Keir still has a lot of explaining to do.